Hey ya folks, my name is Provis, and welcome to a new game called Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles. This is a new city builder that is coming out on March 26th, and it is not your average city builder. In many ways, you could say that this game boasts a minimalist style, and by that I mean you have a minimal number of tools to work with, but what you are able to accomplish with such few tools is vast and downright impressive, not to mention beautiful to look at. There is a free build mode for this game where you can just say Box and enjoy some creative chaos as you paint the map, but we're gonna go ahead and jump into what is effectively the story mode of the game with three different scenarios, and we'll go ahead and pop into the first one. Now there is a sort of story behind this game, we are in the world of Ursi, and actually this is the setting of a totally different game by the same developer called The Falconeer, and if I recall correctly, you flew around on a giant bird with laser cannons. <laughs> actually kind of fun, the art style is exactly the same. Obviously, this is going to have very different gameplay, though. Alright, welcome to our first outposts. Now, this built up here on the rocks is where our workers are going to generate back and gather resources to help us build our city. Now we need to connect this up with some resources. We already have a little wood mill set up next to this giant fungus tree thing. This will get us some wood with which we will be able to start building out the rest of the city. It's very simple. We already have this outpost node selected. We just have to drag out over here to the wood mill. And I'm going to hit the space key in order to build up a little walkway Focus. like so. And one thing you're going to notice is that houses and kind of little uh, production buildings and stuff will naturally start forming here as people start putting together their homes on their way to work. Work. You don't really have to worry about the details of every single structure, just lay the foundation. The rest will happen on its own. Now one thing that right off the bat I should say is going to confuse a lot of people is going to be the control schema for this game. Everything kind of works in nodes, right? You're going to start by selecting this outpost. If we want to go over here, we can click on this wood mill and that's going to move over here. Now we can build off of this. If I want to go ahead and build, let's say, an extra tower right up over here, no problem. And now this is my new node, right? And you're going to have to bounce around between these things. Part of the reason it's going to be a little confusing up front is because this game is really designed to be played with a controller. Now I have tried playing with a controller, I actually find the mouse and keyboard to be just a little bit more intuitive for me personally, but I do think that when people first start playing with this game, it's going to be a little bit tricky to wrap your head around. Don't worry though, if you play around with it for a little bit, it will come naturally. Anyway, getting back into the main point of the game, if I hit the control key, what we're going to see here is actually the flow of resources. Three people are currently being produced here at the Freehouse Outpost, and we can see eight wood is being transported between our towers. The green and the orange line represent both those resources, respectively. There's more that I'm going to need to do, though. We're going to need to get ourselves hooked up to some stone. I can do that. Let's first jump over to this node so I make sure I build off the right point. And then we can go ahead and once again click space here in order to build a walkway. Now, one thing that I will say up front can get a little bit confusing, too, on top of the whole control thing. There have been a few points where I'm playing this game and I'm like, I want to select this building, but it's kind of hard to figure out where I'm supposed to move my mouse. Hey, why aren't you connecting? It's working fine right now, but later on, it gets a little bit more chaotic. Again, that gets a little bit frustrating, admittedly. Hopefully, there will be more intuitive snapping options for that later on. But once you get used to it, it's really not that big of a deal. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of time to just build out a few extra towers, build some more walkways. The more houses, the more buildings and stuff we are able to build around, like, let's say, our um, resource production stuff, the more resources we can enjoy. I also really want to make sure I get plenty of housing, and building anywhere outside of these resources tends to do that. So let's just go ahead and reconnect this up over here, like so. Boom. Notice how well everything kind of just generates around the terrain, right? This looks believable and awesome, and you can see the little houses are getting built. Perfect. Anyway, now that I have a decent amount of wood production, you can see that's bumped up to 10. We have four workers over here as more houses get built. I'm producing six stone. You can see from all the lines, everything is flowing beautifully right now. Let's go ahead and worry about getting a few upgrades. If I head over here to my outpost, we can actually click on the outpost itself and hit space, and we're going to upgrade our tower. Now it is a large outpost. If I actually want to go to some of these other nodes, I can actually just go ahead and take this exact same line of pathing we have right here, hit space, overwrite what already exists, and replace it with some nice stone pathing. It's going to have to rebuild a lot of stuff, but I mean, yeah, it looks kind of cool. We could also go ahead and upgrade a few towers, like so. Nice little stone defensive towers. These can come in handy later, because there are threats in this world. Actually, here's a perfect example, by the way, where it can get a little bit tricky finding a way to connect things the way I want to, right? My mouse is right up over here. You can see this. I'm trying to drag it over to where I think that this outpost ought to be. 
but I can't actually get this to quite snap. We gotta go a little bit lower, and there it is. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. Kind of weird. Again, though, you get used to it. It's really okay. Now, this game isn't just about placing down towers and building a lot of walkways between them. We can also lay down some foundations around some of the larger structures and towers. And if we drag our mouse out over here, you can see we have a square symbol right here. These represent foundations. Drag out further, that's where you get the circles. That's where you would be creating a tower. So let's just say I want to place a foundation right along here. There we go. Builds out down over this direction. Maybe build another one over here. Maybe build a big one out over this way like so. Perfect. And now we just kind of got this little layering area here. And of course, you can build more housing on top of it, as you're seeing. So this creates a lot of extra space. There we go. This is all looking pretty good so far. But let's suppose that we need more resources and more space. So you notice this little blimp running around over here. This is our surveyor. If I hit the tab key, we can swap over to this guy, and now I'll be able to start exploring the world. If I hit the M key, we can take a look at the map, and you may notice it's actually pretty large. There's a lot of space to explore. It gets kind of crazy here, right? So this game's huge, lots of little islands. But down over here where things really matter, we can see a lot of other resources are available. We've got some iron nearby on this little island. Now you can try to use your compass right on your actual ship here. You can see north and try to navigate, or from the map, let's just go ahead and hit the space key, and it'll automatically plot a course. I'll just go ahead and leave the map, and off we go. Most of this world is ocean, so um, be prepared for a lot of water, but every time you find a little something something sticking out, it gets a little bit exciting. Anyway, down over here we have an iron supply. Now I should already have a resource extractor in my inventory, which I don't even know how you see how many of those you've got. I'm not sure how to see your inventory, but I know we have one, so we can go ahead and hit space. We'll just toss something down right over here, and we'll construct a nice little iron mine. Perfect. However, you'll notice this is obviously not connected to my main islands, and building some walkways seems a little bit unreasonable. So what we're going to do is place down a harbor right over here, and that's going to allow us to start transporting resources. But to make that work, first we need to assign ourselves a sea captain. We have a few who are currently available in my... I won't say empire, but someday that's what it will be. Right now, this guy's willing to transport iron and workers, which is exactly what we need. Different kinds of captains will transport different things. Stone and workers, wooden workers, just wood, etc. But this is fine. Let's go ahead and assign this guy. Perfect. However, unfortunately, right now, we don't have any way for those resources to actually get dropped off on our main island. So let's go ahead and actually fast travel our way over here, because... Why wait? And then we'll build a nice little harbor, let's say, right there. Perfect. That'll get connected to my main outpost. And now it's automatically going to get connected to the other harbor, and we'll find that iron is able to start getting transported. And actually, we already see the pink line here. Notice that it gets a bit wavy the further away from our dock it goes, though. At some point, your resources aren't really very accessible based on distance, and that is something you'll have to be able to build around. For now, though, this is fine. Let's go ahead and jump back into our city mode, and I'm going to upgrade our outpost into a beautiful citadel. So this is looking pretty beautiful, perched on a hill like this, with the lots of pathing and housing built around it. Maybe let's just go ahead and build a little bit of extra foundation and stuff over here. That could be kind of nice. I don't want to take up too much of this space. We'll build something out over like this. Perfect. That's all looking kind of cool. Anyway, what we can do is actually go to some of our other towers, though. So let's say, how about this big boy right over here? And we can actually upgrade it a bit more now that we have access to iron. So we've got a really tall tower over here. But what if we keep going, right? Just keep building this thing. Taller and taller. Build some balconies. Build some foundations. Keep going. Taller, taller. And this is as tall as we are able to build our tower. From here, we actually can use uh, the R and F keys to go up and down some floors, creating some nice little, let's say, balconies that can come off of this up to this point here, and then maybe go a little bit lower, do some foundation work over here, right? Oh, that didn't show up quite the way I thought it was going to. How about this? Sure, why not? There we go. This looks kind of nice. Anyway, these tall towers really do serve a purpose. From here, we can assign a commander for our air forces. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button. We've got one who is currently available for us. This guy is stabling up with a few raw recruits. Let's go ahead and assign him. And now we've got warbirds. And with that, the tutorial is actually complete. So now we're really left on our own. And this is actually another weird quirk about this game. It really doesn't do a lot in the way of hand-holding, right? It just kind of points you in the right direction and then says, just go have fun, build to your heart's content, and maybe make some mistakes, learn as you go. 
it's kind of interesting because I really do appreciate a lot of games that uh, really don't feel the need to give you an in-depth and kind of oppressive tutorial, right? They just let you kind of explore the game and figure things out in your own pace. At the same time, there are a few occasions in this game where I've been like, okay, but like really though, what am I supposed to do? How do I get this new thing? I can't find it, right? So it can get, there's a balance. There's a balancing act. I think this game generally does a pretty good job with it though. I wouldn't mind building some nice, like, elevated bridges, by the way. Let's see if we can build one like that. There we go! Oh, that looks cool. There we go. This is looking kind of nice over here. If I hit the control key, we can take a look at the resources. Generally speaking, we're pretty good. We got enough workers to go around, though the command tower the is taking up a waters. few of them. It's Running a little bit low on some stone and stuff, but that's fine. Okay. I am seeing some messages about Before some anomalies or other ships the entering Imperium our space. We should probably go and explore and this. So let's go ahead and talk to this ship, for example. Hello, a transport vessel, some workers, and increased alignment with the Freehouse faction. Now, right now, we are entirely associated with the Freehouse faction. There is no risk of any unrest from that. But if you look at the top right, and I'll hit the M key to make it stand out a bit more, you can see there are a few different factions, right? We've got 890 population with this one faction, but there's also the Mercers, some other folks over here, some pirates. And depending on which factions you start picking up as outposts and adding into your population, there could be a little bit of social unrest and friction that you'll have to worry about. So trying to manage this can get kind of important. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and explore for a little bit, though, because I do see additional ships. I saw some anomalies that we need to explore. All of this is very important. This game is very My much about getting some exploration. Okay, we can get a captain for hire here. This is uh, a fighting captain, right? This person has a cutter. If we had a long transport route, we would have to worry a lot about some pirates. Having a ship that is able to patrol between these points and intercept any enemies actually can be very useful. By the way, over here at the iron mine, I don't feel like we're going to be producing enough over here. I'd like to get some additional housing and stuff, but in order to do that, I'm going to need some wood. What I will do is go ahead and build up another harbor, like so, and then here I would like to assign the wood-only captain, because we've already got some workers, and I've got iron going where I want it to go, so just wood should be fine. There we go, get another harbor set up over here. We should have access to wood back in this mining site. Which means now I can go ahead and start building out some towers and some walkways, get a little bit more housing in this area. Can't build any taller than this though, we don't have any stone. I could set up another harbor, but this honestly should be fine for the moment. Okay, what else we got on the world? I see that there's something over here. Let's plot a course and go find out what's happening. Notice we got some little birds that are flying around, by the way. This is the uh, warbirds that are being led by my commander. And yeah, if enemies are around, they will start firing their laser. What do we find over here? A meager holding, a new outpost. Okay, so we can actually place down a whole second outpost of Freehouse faction right now if we want to. That's kind of cool. But in order to actually get that in my inventory, and again, the inventory is kind of nebulous to me, we'd actually want to go over here and then hover over this and hit the V key in order to deconstruct it. Otherwise, you can't do anything with it. The game doesn't really tell you that exactly. You just kind of have to pay attention to the actions that are available up in the top left. That's fine by me. Actually found another ship over here. Let's go ahead and get a, another fighting vessel, a steam rake. That sounds pretty advanced. We also found an anomaly. We should probably go and find out what's going on over there. Dark and mysterious clouds. Could be good things, could be pirates. Let's find out. Okay, it's a businessman. Now, this is another thing where the game doesn't really tell you exactly what this does. This guy is going to be able to start building Mark II heated houses. How does that help me? How does that get me extra workers or whatever else? I don't totally know. I just sort of assume it does. Anyway, let's just keep exploring. What else is out here in the ocean blue? I see what looks to be some other faction built up over here. Wow, that's a pretty looking city. Look at all those foundations. And this is the thing is I've actually seen a uh, video created by the developers or at least published by the developers where they handed this game off to somebody who had like 32 hours to play around with it and they built a sprawling, gorgeous city. Like, if you really try to be careful with where you place your foundations, your balconies, your towers, and so on, you can make some downright gorgeous structures in this game. Let's talk to these guys. Whoa, All right, so settled. these guys, we could right. possibly establish a trade port. They'll send out iron in exchange for some stone. 
It's not quite what I need. Other options would eventually include maybe inviting them to join us. We could even declare war, and they are kind of intimidated by me, so we probably would win this. But I don't think it's worth antagonizing other factions right now. Ooh, a really good captain over here. He can transport everything. Nice. That would make setting up another outpost very, very easy. There's some wood down over here, but unfortunately, unless you set the a game rules to give you some early extra extractors, I don't think there's anything we can do with this yet. Let's confirm. No, no I do not have any resource, resource extractors. extractors. This is one of those examples where I, I appreciate the game not doing a lot of hand-holding. However, I wasn't told how you get more extractors. So for me, this gets a little bit frustrating where it's like, well, I want to expand my resource production, but you're telling me I can't. Why not? I think the answer is, if we explore, we'll eventually find some that we can dismantle and bring back. That would make sense, but I haven't found any yet, so let's keep looking. What is this over here, by the way? Looks like another little uh, faction here. Ah, uh, we got some pirates. Hmm, okay. We could take a pirate outpost and bring it back, but that would increase my uh, bannerless alignment, which might create some problems, so I'm gonna say, no, I decline. Oh, but they're angry about that. All right, we're in combat now. Pew, 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 go forth, my little warbirds. Shoot them with your laser guns. And yeah, your balloon can take some damage, and yeah, your guys can get shot out of the sky, and that would be terrible, and so on, right? Like, this is an actual dogfight going on right now. Let's see if we can destroy their tower that's shooting some rockets at me. Can't really control what you're shooting exactly, you just kind of move your little ship around and try not to get hit. Taking out their own flyers would be the easiest way to dominate the skies, though. That's kind of what it's all about. Let's see if we can get behind this guy. Come on, get over here, birdie. And I'm having one heck of a time hitting this thing. Maybe it's not a bird, maybe it's a bat. I don't know. There we go, finally. I lost a couple of rookies, but we did manage to technically conquer this village. Or at least, I guess we destroyed it? Yeah, it's going away since I didn't let them into my territory. Oh, now I feel bad. I'm pretty sure I just pushed them all into the sea. Oh well, can't cry about it anymore. Let's keep looking around. Looks like we found another island with some additional wood resources, but until I get another extractor, it there's really not much I can horizon. do about that. Hello, buildings on the horizon. Uh, we found a unique building. Something with sacred power of prayer and speech. Okay, I don't know what this is gonna do exactly, but let's go ahead and demolish it. And I guess we can take that back with us. Ooh, I like this island. Look at all the big sharp rocks. We can make a beautiful city on these rocks. I like it. There's even some stone over here as well. Oh, this would be a perfect place for a second outpost. I think I'll just go ahead and place one. All right, I'll just go ahead and place an outpost over here so we can fast travel over here later, but I don't know if I can do anything with it for a while. Nothing we can do with this until we have some wood though. So they're just gonna get stuck here. I guess we could actually take a harbor and just kind of transport resources over here. But if I did that, I'd really need to maintain this route because we're very far from home. What about that nice little unique building though? Oh yeah, we can totally place this thing right over here. All right, let's just go ahead and place it. Bada boom, and there's our nice little temple. Oh, that looks nice. What does it do? I have absolutely no idea. It just looks cool. Ooh, another refugee settlement. This one was really close by and I totally missed it. More pirates. In that case. Nope, we're just gonna have to fight. Sorry. It's funny, in the test games I did for this game, uh, I didn't run into nearly this many pirates. Which does tell me that this map is at least somewhat procedurally generated, right? You may start with yes, the exact God. same land masses, but what you'll find out here in the ocean is gonna be randomized every time. Whoa, giant fishy over there. <laughs> I like ocean refugees, planets, they're cool. More refugees over here, how did I miss this? All right, we find some mansers. Ah, okay, so this is another outpost that we can salvage. But this time, it's not pirates, it's gonna be the Mansers. These guys are kind of like the technologically savvy group that are on this planet. So if we wanna introduce a little bit of social and cultural uh, friction, we can certainly do that. I assume that by building down some Manser-themed buildings, we might get access to different types of technology, maybe different kinds of military commanders with different ships that are flying around. All of that could be useful. Tell you what, I got a use in mind for these guys. I think there had been some additional stone off in this direction and I could use a bit more. Or actually a refugee settlement just spawned right on top of the quarry. Maybe they're already here. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Well, eh, 
I, I, I still think I want to place down maybe the Mansers or something. Although, this is actually kind of a respectable little town you've got over here. It's actually not that bad. All you're really missing at this point is a dock for some extra, uh, some extra resources. You need stone and iron. Oh, fine. Sorry, Mansers. You're gonna have to wait. These guys are staying where they are. Now I can see that, yeah, we do have other resources. It's a little shady, though. Look at all those wriggly lines. We do not have much in the way of stone or iron over here. There we go. This place gets built up at least a little bit around the, what will be a quarry zone. Still need to find some more extractors, though. Don't know where to get them. A resource colony up over here. Hello. These appear to be pirates. We could talk to them. Try to establish some more trade, or just say, ah, screw it, let's just go ahead and declare war on them, but then we're at war with all the pirates. Is that a good idea? I don't know, probably not. I'm a little bit wary of trading away my workers for some wood, but I feel like we can always back off from this later. Let's go ahead and establish a trade harbor. Let's go ahead and attach a captain that can transport back the wood and bring them some workers. And there we go, that should take care of that. So we're technically trading with some pirates. I don't love it, but if it works, it works. Hmm, something weird over here though. Look at that giant chain sticking out of the rock. Yeah, the world of Ursi, I, I can't tell if it's exactly post-apocalyptic. There was a great war that kind of ruined a lot of the world. But stuff like this over here just makes you wonder, like really, how bad was the devastation? What did this world look like before? More refugees out here randomly in the middle of the shallow waters. I do we feel bad for you. Ah, okay. So we can get some Imperium alignment with this faction. All right, so we've had access to pretty much everyone. I've denied the pirates, but the other two factions, I don't know. I could see that being useful. Approaching another giant settlement over here. I don't think this one's controlled by the banner list. This looks Imperium to me. Hello, the Imperial Academy. Actually, these guys want lumber and they would give me workers, the exact opposite job I have before. Eh, not sure there's much I want to do about that right now, but okay. There's a lot of other places we could hit too. Good lord, look at all this. There's so much in this game. This would take forever to travel across. Whoa! Hey, there's a combat happening over here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's going on? Who's attacking my stuff? Good thing we've got some sort of a ship that is currently patrolling the area. Um... Yeah, looks like some pirate forces. This is why you can't neglect your holdings back at home. Always gotta pay attention or leave behind some defenders. Right, okay. Well, I'm not totally sure what I'm supposed to be doing now, so tell you what, let's just get back to building. When in doubt, build. However, there is a limit to what you're able to do at some point in this game, right? If you look at your some of your main resources like this over here with the wood, what we'll see is it's got 23 wood left. It's kind of hard to see that at the very bottom, but it's down there. That means we can support 23 more buildings that require some wood, and then this uh, is considered to be an exhausted resource, or at least completely stretched thin. That's where we would need to get some additional stuff. And that's where I'm saying, well, how the heck do I get more resource extractors so I can keep building? Still, no reason not to just go ahead and expand across this island and enjoy as much as I'm able to, at least for now. There is something kind of pleasing about building out these cities, though, trying to figure out where best to place down some of the foundations and stuff. I mean, really, with only like three or four buttons. Look at the city that I'm creating here, right? I mean, it, it looks phenomenal. Like, this is really an imagination-sparking kind of a game. You just, you wonder what the world looks like that, you know, builds around these cliff faces like this. It's a really cool aesthetic. There we go, this is starting to look pretty darn gorgeous, I think. Look at that, sprawling all over the place. Nothing compared to the 100,000 population city that was shown off in one of the trailers, but it certainly is enough to give you an idea of what you're able to do with this. If you really want to sit down and be dedicated and sculpt out some gorgeous cities, it's really not that hard to do. By the way, it looks like we can see our inventory. Hello, okay, I've actually missed this entirely, so if we go back to our map real quick, I can show you up the top left. There is an inventory over here that is showing me what kind of extractors I've currently got available. I've got one Imperium outpost available right now. Uh, there's a second one right there, actually. Okay, so I got two of these available, and we can even see exactly how experienced my battle group currently is. Nice. There's also a soul tree over here, which tells you about some of the different captains that you've got recruited onto your side, and some of the other ones that might be out there available to be found. But finding them in a world this big, whoo that's gonna be a challenge and a half. 
Found another one of these little black smoke areas. Uh, more businesses are going to appear. Castellus Crum, you want it? I can brew it. A little spot for Crum? Sure, why not? Who wouldn't like a glass of Crum? Oh, looks like we found ourselves another little outpost here. I bet you this one gives me an extractor, actually. Uh, no, we gained a commander. Hmm, darn it. Well, I'm not opposed to uh, maybe getting myself another one of these commanders here. High quality timber. So this person isn't actually going to give me any fighting forces. It's just going to boost up what? My wood production? Kind of hard to tell how much we're actually gaining out of this or if we're getting anything better at all. But still, good to know that there are different kinds of commanders out there. So we have military commanders and we've got economic commanders. Very cool. See, there are still things I'm finding out about this game the more I play it. And I think that's one of the big attractions to this game. Not only do you get to build some pretty fantastical cities that just, they're really effortless to put up, but they look great. But also, there's just so much to explore and discover. That said, I do feel like maybe I'm getting hampered by the fact that I can't find any more extractors and no one told me where to find them or how to find them. So tell you what, let's go ahead and jump into a little free build action, just so I have more resources than I know what to do with and I can go have some fun. This does seem like a very precarious set of rocks. Okay, let's be a fun challenge. There we go, let's just go ahead and kind of lay out the groundwork, the ribs for what this is gonna look like, sprawling across all of these rocks. And then presumably I need to go find like, I don't know, a stone source or something. I assume I can't just like upgrade these things if I haven't found the resources, right? I stand corrected, it is after all free build mode. Okay, this Imperium colony is starting to look a lot nicer all of a sudden, forget the resources. In that case, let's just build to have fun. There we go, I like adding in some of the verticality to these towers and the bridges that go across. I don't know why, this just has a phenomenal aesthetic to me once you do that. Look at those bridges! Oh man, I should have been a civil engineer. There we go, now I think the city's finally starting to come together. I love the look of all these bridges kind of forming major highways. Where probably the rich live up toward the top and the poor down toward the bottom or something along those lines. Tossing a couple of harbors and stuff for good measure. Yeah, this is really cool. It's pretty rare that I find a minimalist style of game that uh, is intended to be very simple to play, yet has this much aesthetical complexity to what you're able to build. It really looks awesome and unique. And I don't want people to feel discouraged that maybe I stopped playing with the campaign because I couldn't find more extractors and stuff. Just because I can't find them doesn't mean they're not out there and there isn't some way of doing things. It just means there's a lot more that I need to learn and there's something kind of exciting about that. I don't know, I think this game has something really cool going on for it. It's not gonna be for everyone, right? The controls can be a little bit funky to deal with, you have to get used to it. At the end of the day, you're not having the same kind of production micromanagement you might be used to in a lot of other games you've seen on this channel. And yet, I really do think this game stands out in its respective niche and deserves some attention. I absolutely adore the look of all of these cities. Alas, though, I do think that's going to be where we end things for today. So a very big thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this informative. Again, this game is coming out on March 26th, and I will include a link in the description down below if you guys want to check it out. Otherwise, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I, as always, will see you guys next time.